If you're watching this, you've probably spoken with your friends about underwater welding and asked, how do those guys mix electricity and water? This question has sparked a lot of misunderstood concepts that we hope to clear up with you today. First, we'll check out what's happening at a molecular level. Underwater welding often uses MMA or stick welding, which incorporates an electric arc as the source of energy. The stick portion, or cathode, is negatively charged. The metallic weld area, or anode, is positively charged, and the plasma serves as a pathway for the electrons to travel through. This is where the electric arc is also. When an arc is struck, the negative electrons from the cathode travel down to the anode. Conversely, the anode's positive ions shoot up toward the negative cathode, all centered around the plasma. This all provides a systematic movement of heat distribution, with about one-third going toward the cathode and two-thirds going toward the anode. It's important to remember that underwater welding comes in two forms, wet and dry. Most visualized divers completely surrounded by water, which is wet welding, but the dry underwater welding process provides an environment without water for the weld seam to be joined. It uses a chamber called a habitat for welder divers. This habitat may range from as small as a balloon to as large as a room. Larger habitats are usually pressurized slightly above normal. They rotate air in and out of the chamber to keep nitrogen and other gases from collecting. If these gases were to build up, the habitat would risk a fire or explosion. Dry welding uses a specific cable system similar to that of surface welding. Its power supply contains an alternating or direct current and contains a return lead from the weld site to the power supply. Wet welding's operating system is different. It uses cables with a welding and return lead along with a knife switch to control power to the welder. The power supply only uses a direct current and it's most often associated with negative polarity. This knife switch allows underwater welders to operate safely since their welding machine will only be turned on when they require it. When an underwater welder strikes an arc, their stick or electrode creates a surrounding gaseous bubble that shields their weld from water and corrosive gases like oxygen. This bubble is created from the flux on the outside of their electrode. It establishes a direct pathway from the welding stick to the weld area so electricity isn't firing into the surrounding water. The property that disassociates wet welding from all other welding forms is water bubbles. Thousands of tiny bubbles are created when an underwater welder begins welding due to the heat displacement. This creates challenges with the weld puddle and general sight of the weld area. Finally, it's important to remember that electrodes used in wet welding are always waterproof and the flux of the electrodes burns slower and provides a more even burn during operation. In addition, the slag drips at a somewhat even pace and protects the weld seam outside of the weld bubble. I hope this clarifies some of your questions on the process of underwater welding. If you have more questions, please check out Water Welder's article on how underwater welding works.